Apple doesn't release a new product category very often. The last time this happened was in 2015 with the Apple Watch. Before that, it was the iPad in 2010. Now we have the Reality, sorry, the Vision Pro. And no matter what you think of the headset, there's no denying it's a pretty big deal. So it's important to get up to speed because there are a lot of things you need to know about the headset, especially if you're even remotely considering dropping $3,500 on one, which by the way, is the starting price of the Vision Pro. Specs, release date, what you can even do with it, we got it all here. But hey, before we get to it, leave a like on this video and get subscribed because I see you. I know some of you are subscribed, shout out to you, but if you're not subscribed, I see you. Anyway, Vision Pro, let's get the price out of the way. It's 3,500 bucks and importantly, Apple said starting at $3,500 when it announced the headset during WWDC. So there's a pretty good chance there will be a more expensive model. I don't suspect a more expensive model will be much different, but maybe an upcharge for some more storage or some bundled software, that's kind of in the range that I'm looking at. For when you can actually get one, Apple just says early 2024 for now. We don't have a specific release date, but I'm guessing it will be probably around springtime. Some early rumors said the headset would launch in late 2023, so we're certainly going to see it in the first half of next year and probably within the first few months. Now, Vision Pro isn't just Apple's take on VR. It's actually a lot different. This is an augmented or mixed reality headset, depending on how exactly you define those terms. But the idea here is that the headset is actually overlaid on your environment instead of transporting you to some virtual space. You'll still be able to see everything around you. There is a way to get into more of like a, a VR style space with the Vision Pro, but I'll get to that in a minute. AR, XR, whatever you wanna call it, that's not new, but the significant development Apple has made here is that the Vision Pro doesn't require any controllers. Instead, it has a complex array of sensors for both your eyes and your hands, and that is the only way you interact with it. Imagine like an iPad or iPhone screen full of apps, but instead of tapping on what you want, you just reach up and kind of pinch it between your fingers. And if you wanna select a different app, you just look at it and select it. The early impression of the headset, which were all done behind closed doors, so we don't have exactly an idea of how it works, say that this system works really well. I have no doubt that it works well either. I haven't actually tried the headset myself, but user experience generally comes first for Apple, so I suspect this is an area where they focus a lot of their attention. The sensors are doing a lot more than just tracking your eyes and hands, too. For starters, the eye sensors do a scan to authenticate you when you put on the headset so you don't have to enter a password or anything like that. They can also sense when someone is near you and show them your eyes, which is a feature called eyesight. This is definitely the weirdest part of the Vision Pro. It's a technique that Meta called reverse pass-through, which it was trying on some of its early uh, MetaQuest Pro prototypes. Uh, when you want to, or when someone is nearby, the Vision Pro will project your eyes out of the front of the headset. It's not shutting off the screen or anything like that, it's actually projecting your face on the other side of the headset, and it accounts for orientation, according to Apple, so it shouldn't look too wonky depending on where people are standing around you. I say shouldn't because we don't really know right now, and it definitely looks a little weird, even in Apple's trailer. So that's what the Vision Pro is. Now we need to talk about what it does. Apple says this is a spatial computer. It's not a headset that you need to tether to something else or requires, you know, a MacBook to work. This is the computer. And that looks to be true. The Vision Pro is powered by Apple's M2 processor, which is the same processor inside the most recent MacBook Air and Mac Mini. There's plenty of power on tap here. Honestly, it might be the most powerful AR headset we've seen based purely on specs. Apple is releasing it with a handful of first-party apps that you'd expect. Safari, Messages, Keynote, Apple Music, Apple TV, FaceTime, you know, your standard bread and butter Mac and iPhone apps. In addition, Apple is launching a new app store specifically for the Vision Pro and its Vision OS options operating system. For now, we don't have a ton of apps specifically for Vision OS. However, Apple says these apps have broader capabilities. For example, if you're sent a 3D model and a message or an email, you can grab it, drag it out of the app, and see the model in front of you, you know, rotate it, get up close, all of that stuff. At launch, the Vision Pro will probably be light on apps built specifically for Vision OS outside of Apple's own first party offerings. Apple has announced a partnership with Unity to give developers more tools. If you're not familiar, Unity is a popular game engine and 3D app making toolkit. So we will see more in the future for sure. And right at the start, Apple is giving users a taste of what they could see in the future. Disney announced it's working with Apple to bring themed environments and overlays to Vision Pro, and they're themed around Star Wars, Marvel, sports, and 
well, of course, Disney itself. There's a lot of cool stuff we could see here in the future, but out of the gate, I suspect most of the apps you'll interact with are iPhone and iPad apps because yes, and this is the big deal for the Vision Pro, it supports a lot of iPhone and iPad apps. You won't get the AR features like you get with some Vision OS apps, but you can still use them with the headset. Instead, they'll kind of show up like Windows in your view. You can have you know messages off to one side, maybe a web browser or a photo app, and you can drag them around, resize them, very Tony Stark Jarvis-esque. All of this syncs up with your other Apple devices as well. So if you answer a message on the Vision Pro, it'll reflect on your Mac and iPhone and vice versa. You can even bring your other Apple products into Vision Pro. Uh, it wireless connects to Mac, so you can pull up a screen and make it larger, and it works with peripherals like the Magic Keyboard, so you can do that instead of, you know, typing on air. And for me, one of the coolest aspects of this is movies. Apple is supporting something called environments, which will block your view and focus on whatever window you have open. You can adjust how much of the environment shows up with an Apple Watch crown on top of the headset. And I imagine we will see a ton of these environments. Apple's already showed off a bunch of them and Disney is making more of its own. So I suspect we'll see a ton of them in the future. That theater experience where you can see a huge screen in a unique environment, that's something AR headsets have been pitching for years but Apple might finally pull it off. The company says that you can have up to a 100 foot screen and you can do so in a panoramic view so it wraps around your vision. The screen should look very sharp too. Each eye in the Vision Pro has more than 4K's worth of pixels. Let me repeat that. Each eye in the Vision Pro has more than 4K's worth of pixels. And Apple is using micro OLED for the lenses so it should have great HDR and color. Add on top of that support for 3D movies and spatial audio built into the headset, which Apple is calling its most advanced spatial audio ever, and the Vision Pro is definitely looking like a premier entertainment experience. That 3D view works for photos and videos as well. The Vision Pro is Apple's first 3D camera ever, allowing you to take 3D photos and videos with the headset and replay them with basically no other device does. There are 3D cameras and 3D displays, but you're getting both with the Vision Pro. And I should mention that all of this is done, according to Apple, with basically no lag. The M2 processor is pulling most of the work, but the Vision Pro also has a dedicated R1 chip that's specifically made for streaming camera, sensor, and audio to the screen. And Apple says that it does so within 12 milliseconds. There's no doubt that the Vision Pro looks seriously impressive, but there's a very important aspect Apple didn't spend a lot of time talking about, and that's battery life. Apparently, the Vision Pro will only last about two hours away from the charger. And on top of that, it's not fully wireless. There's a battery pack tethered to the device that you'll need to slot into your pocket. It might be a premier entertainment experience, but only if you're near a wall outlet and willing to you know, plug the headset in. There will be even more to talk about with the headset as it gets closer to launching. This is kind of just a, a 101 from what we know right now. Like, I didn't even touch on the fact that you can scan your face and create a virtual avatar that's shockingly realistic for FaceTime calls. But for now, that's all we know. All we can do is look to early 2024 when the headset actually shows up. In the meantime, leave a like on this video, get subscribed, and leave me a comment about the Vision Pro below. Do you even care that it exists when it costs $3,500? Or are you interested in having some cutting edge tech no matter what the price? Let me know. All right, thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next one.